My name is Dr. Dennis Terry. I've been following the land for four years. I was a devoted Christian who thought he had the truth until I met the man of this time. Dr. Malachi Z. York has come to right the wrong. No more spook belief. No more blind faith. He has the facts. Bring on your imam. Bring on your priests. Bring on your sheikhs and rabbis. Dr. Malachi Z. York speaks all of their Semitic languages that most of them don't even know. He has allowed burnt men and women, scholars and their followers to question him. And there wasn't a question he couldn't answer. So now that he's asking the questions, they all fall to the truth. You can't box with God. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you the most profound teacher in this day and time, Dr. Malachi Z. York. Nubians aren't responding and not realizing that the end of the world is near. With all the doctrine that's coming out and all the different things that you're doing little by little, you know, you have an effect on the people in a big way. You know what I'm saying? And you just got to be ready for it. Unfortunately, a lot of Nubians are not into computers like we are. And um, so they don't even know about the hell about They don't even know, you don't know about the hell about right? comics. Right? A lot of you don't know about the hell about comics yet. That's why I got, what I did is I got a copy of the tape. So they can hear the Amorites tell them about a craft like, like, like entities that have, seems like it's alive, yet not alive, that's four times the size of Earth that they just discovered. And NASA has confirmed that it's there next to a meteorite that came into existence two years ago called Heba. And it's on the tape and they're called Heba. And they're actually talking about this, this new craft thing and they tell you it's coming towards Earth. And it's intelligently controlled and it's coming to get a group of people. And they say on the tape that these group of people that they're coming to get are people that are involved in, in an advanced study. And, 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 no, they literally say it on the tape. They say they're out to teach people. Did anybody hear anything yet? Oh, you all right, you picked it up, right? Drop it in the car on the way back home. <laughs> and listen to it. In the end of it, the guy says, uh, in the beginning of it, in fact, it says, um, uh, I'd like to thank um, Dr. So-and-so, something Melakai. That's not me now. Right? If somebody who uses the name Malachi. Most of them don't pronounce the name Malachi, they pronounce the name Malachi. Right? So it's a slip of tongue. When they say Malachi, that means they, they're letting us know where the source is, but they cannot deny. And we have the, we went into the computer and um, internet and it showed us the comet. They had pictures of the comet in there and um, it's good to know it's there. They noticed, they noticed the Nibiru and they literally say on the tape, uh, Zachariah Sitchin refers to this as Nibiru. Next um, came into us was, um, I tried to fact it as many people as I can, I don't know if you got the skull. Right? Y'all get the skull? The skull of a dinacle, the twice the chromium twice the size. And right after that, about two days later, they sent us the skull of a terror, a cone. Because everybody, when we said the cone is the real, people thought you were chopping off Saturday Night Live. Of course, they don't know that everything the Amorites are, he, he puts the intelligence in front of you so he won't believe it. But they got the actual skull, and we're getting more information coming constantly because now that people know through the internet that we're the source of this information, they feel free sending us stuff. Amorites, everybody, I'm just clipping. I got like 10 stories on how Jesus was married to Mary Magdalene. You hear somebody had dogs with that one? Had children. I was kids still moved, you know, was protected by the, you know, whom, etc. All these stories are coming out. They had a whole thing on television the other night on um, Discovery of London, where they talk about, you know, the, you know, the um, graves of, of skulls. The Grave of Skulls under Old Jerusalem. Well, they have a place called the Grave of Skulls under Old Jerusalem, for those who don't know. Where they have all the skeletons of all the uh, popes and all of that. And this, that's that place where they say that um, Freemasons go when they reach a certain degree. Believe me, I know. And they go to Jerusalem and they go beneath Old Jerusalem and they see the body of Jesus. And uh, they've taken the body of Muhammad out of the 18th century out of Medina. That's when they rebuilt Medina. The mosque in the north, and they, when they did that there, what actually happened is the, the shriners took the body of Muhammad out of that, which they had preserved, and his body is also in the, under there. And, and only uh, people of a certain degree of Freemasonry are allowed to see it as a confirmation. Actually, they're not looking at Jesus' body, they're looking at Bar Jesus' body. Because in there also, in a the, in the higher degree, they tell you that Jesus went to Egypt and he died there at 120. But Jesus' son, why he was the one that was killed in the streets of Jerusalem, body transferred to the Vatican in Rome, where they simulated the crucifixion of him there, kept his body there for a certain amount of years, and then the Knights of Templar went there and got it and bought it and put it in there. So they have a special chamber where they keep things sacred. They also, I don't know if some of y'all remember years ago, I said, 
under the sink. There's some documents here that I told you about this. They're trying to get up under the sink to get to these documents. They found out the sink is the symbol, was a symbol of, you know, in the astrological charts of the ancient Egyptians, you know, as the, uh, the era of Leo, the lion. That's what it's supposed to symbolize, and that's something to do with the Mars project and the, what they refer to as the Adama project. This is that one Adama, right? And so they are unmasking because we should never say they discovered anything. They don't discover, they uncover things that we bury, right? So a new word, just a new one for you, right? <laughs> they don't discover anything. But anyway, they're starting to uncover a lot of the things that's going to confirm everything that you have put trust in me in is going to become confirmed for you in front of your own eyes. And not that you need it. I know some of y'all is following me wherever I go. And I do feel that. Right? But I'm just saying, it is good for those who come to your class with the skeptic. And I didn't say skeptic. I said skeptic. They come skipping around <laughs> looking for some type of evidence to what appears to be a science fiction movie when you start kicking the doctrine on them. I know deep in your heart, as much as you may have loved me and I you, when you had to go out and teach what I was teaching you, it was difficult. You say, no, the guy is really from another planet. And he has 19 spirits talking to him. And, and you know, never mind, we'll pick this up later. <laughs> let's, talk about, let's talk about something that appears more sensible. But the confirmation of who and what I am is confirming itself. And that's the best I can ask that from my brother, the on the side, that they give me just a little help. Because to come here, you know, to incarnate into this individual's body and try to convey this message to people that have been so television, so subliminally sedated, I mean, that they removed the essence of the nine from me and implanted the six, the lower side of the circle. It's such a hard job just to get you to not listen to the wrong music. You think you're saying something cool. When you say, I like um, such and such a music, you don't understand nothing about music. Because y'all are familiar with the 800 megahertz frequencies that are coming from the air now. You're familiar with that. You do? You do? No, you're not. Okay, well, I thought I talked about it. But you know, each one of the human beings have in their brain, they're called magnetic particles. That's the best term that they can come up with them. One day, of course, I'll give you the real name, but let's let them play with it for a while. Magnetic particles. You have nine magnetic particles in your brain. All right, these magnetic particles can be affected by wavelength, by frequencies, higher and lower. Now, the cellular phones are all set at 800 megahertz. And that brain of yours was 900 megahertz. You follow that? And it drops down. And all of the time, I was speaking about the brain capacity of an amorite being less than that of a Nubian. They were talking about that frequency response, your ability to respond to sound. All right? Of course, as you know, microwave also is moving on a sound. I, I can explain that a couple of years ago, how microwave cooks food by sound, which means that they're able to cue in and deaden some of those magnetic particles. A lot of Nubians, instead of walking around in nine ether, and nine ether is beyond their head, to my, in the nine ether state of activated nine magnetic particles, they have dropped down to four, three, two, and when you see a brother who's totally delirious, unable to coagulate words, he is about down to one, and some just go vegetate out. And what they have to do is they give you all types of drugs so that it drops your body down to what's referred to as an alpha wavelength, which is one step from dead. And that way you stay, they refer to as monotone. Monotheos, monotone. Mono, they keep you dead. Right? And so they are now capable of sending these frequencies out. They are putting these stations along the road. I know as y'all cross the country, if you look up, you see this thing on a tall pole, and it's shaped like a tetrahedron, and it has little things on all four, three sides. Just look for them, and, and you'll see them. Well, Right now, the government has 24 different satellites aligned to the planet, around the planet. All right? And he has 24,000 of these receivers and senders situated across the country. He is able to tune in 
to your radio via frequency. It's called frequency response. This unit that I picked up, that I, that I brought here and clicked on is a unit that's making it possible for everybody on Kadesh to turn to a certain station on the radio and they can hear me talking without any wires. Which means I'm sending control frequencies through the air. You follow that? Once I understand, once I understand the human and that his brain waves are between 900 and 700, you follow? 7 half ounce of brain, you know that? 900 and 700 on megahertz, I can send out certain types of frequencies. I can also lock these frequencies into music because when they started doing this, they did it in a place called uh, Wacken Hut, naval base. You should investigate and find out before they saw that. And the reason why they refer to it as the Harp Project, if you heard of that, out of Alaska, is because a harp, of course, is an instrument. And they know that by strumming a harp, you can get different response. Years ago, a lot of people used to come to me and ask me, how do they line their body up? And I would tell them, what they had to do is go to a keyboard and um, take the middle C and find the two eighths of octaves. Find the octave between middle C from one to the next. Of course, you know, it's eight notes. And I said, you go up and down the keyboard until you find that note that soothes your body. And then you'll know what key you're vibrating on. You know what vibration works with your body. The uh, Buddha or the Tibetans, they know about this. And so they have learned how to make their throat make three sounds simultaneously. And they chant like that. Constantly. And they got this going on right now while we're sitting here. Meanwhile, the practitioners of the faith start off. And they're on another frequency while the priests are pulling. The sound is a strange thing. If Deke is making a certain sound and I do another sound, a half step up or a whole step up and I do a, a, let's say he does a one and I do a three and he does a five, we create what's called harmony. You follow that? As you know, none of the groups are singing in harmony no more. They have this new kind of harmony called unitary in harmony. They think they're singing in harmony because two or three of them are singing the same note and it's partially unison, unison in part harmony and none of the kids have it no more because they had to stop that because that vibrates three bones up here in the sinus that connect to the tetrahedron that the nose creates which opens the eye of Phosphia, the third eye. They know what frequencies we move on. They know our emotional state. Now, they click them on and off at different times. For instance, Sunday morning, they have it on a very low frequency and people feel it's Sunday. Even when they're not Christian. They have it where, well, it's Sunday, it's kind of calm. When it comes to about 8 o'clock Sunday, they start to speed up the, 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 the oscillation, right? And I'm going to get the oscillators in a minute. Speed up the oscillation valve inside the frequency to get the response and get higher pitch and people become more hyper. And Sunday people start speeding faster because they're trying to get them prepared for money. What has happened is they know that our body moves on a different frequency, respond differently than theirs does. Obviously, because most Caucasian singers sing in high natural voices. Most Nubian singers sing in low voices. Or they were forced to emulate the Amorite and use what is referred to as a fall, settle, or a placement. But not a natural high voice. Very few Nubian singers have a natural high voice unless they go out their way to, like Seal or a couple of others who want to be Amorites, go out their way to sound like Amorites. They're already programmed. They've already got inside his head when he had that accident. And all the frequency. They can also alter the frequency response. Let me tell you what I mean by that so you can a better understand. Uh, years ago, I tried to teach this, but people wasn't as ready then as they are now. Simple. Not uncomplicated. 
it's the period of time that music took a change. From the time you came in from Africa, when everything was based on drums and chants, right? And you had a kalimba, you follow that? And you had a marimba, and then as it moved into the Latino world, and you had a conga, and et cetera, et cetera, you know the instruments I'm talking about that apply to us as a people. All right, now eventually, our music went into blues. Of course, blues was a result of the fact that the Amorite gave us the blues. He took everything from us, beat us up, robbed us, raped us, castrated us, and we became quite depressed. As a result, our music, which is our emotions, became depressed. In due time, that blues changed into rock and roll for people who had cars, <laughs> and R&B for those who didn't. The reason why they called it rock and roll is because little Caucasian kids with combs in their back pocket and grease in their hair and bucks on used to drive around with their car radios on and rock while they rolled. Most Nubians couldn't afford a car, so ours was based on rhythm and blues. All was done standing one place dancing. And the blues was mixed in depression, now with rhythm, and we called it up tempo. Beat up the tempo a little bit. And there we got rhythm and blues. All right, I'm like, of course, want to do rhythm and blues, the same way a lot of Negroes want to try to do heavy metal and rock. It won't work. Hootie and the Blowfish, it won't work long. He was just put out there to destroy the fact that they had no Caucasian to come up with any good hits this year, and they needed a Negro who's a Caucasian to take all the awards, that's all. All right, so, as that happened, he started squeezing us, namely the men, to get us to start singing in high voices, come, commence around the 60s. And that produced the Delphonics, Blue Magic, Stylistics, Black Ivory, Shy Lights, Name some order. Smokey Robinson and the Miracles, Temptations had, but they had a um, Melbourne. A lot of the hit records were based on um, Alim is his real name. Eddie Kendrick was his um, other name, right? And he was a false setup. This was done intentionally to get us to love high pitch sounds. You follow? Because that's the only way we can get a hit record, is to sing the way they want. And so Blue Magic and everybody, we all screaming our voices out, trying to sound like white people, with white men sing naturally in a high voice. You know, which is self explanatory Right? But um, they managed to control our minds then. While we were in these clubs, you know, clubs are used for one thing, gathering people or hitting people in the head with, and when you went to a club, both things were happening to you. They were gathering you and clubbing you in the head. Right? Okay? So we were gathering these clubs, and this before disco creeped in, and we started dancing. The best thing we could go back to was our Latin roots. You follow that? So we grabbed the Latin, and we started going to the Palladium, and dancing to the Allegro All-Stars, and uh, Tito Puente, Pacheco, and we was in it. And he saw that the Latin population was becoming one with the Negro population, and that really frightened him, that we realized that we're the same family. So he tried to split us, but as a split occurred, instead of us going totally away, we started hustling. You know what hustle means, right? Moving fast, jumping around that clown. So we started hustling. And then what he did is he staged an invasion of America by a group called Devo. And they came in with a sound, Trans Europe Express. Had no body language, the group stood there in plastic hats and black eyes and no motion, and just was saying over and over again, Trans. Europe Express, that's all he said. Trans Europe Express. And we went, beep, boom, beep, boom, beep, boom, beep, boom, beep, boom, 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 boom. And everybody was listening at that time. What they were doing is they were introducing the Moog synthesizer. One of the first, first synthesizers to come in and take out analog sound to bring in digital. To take out acoustic sound and bring in the synthetic instrument. By acoustic sound, I mean, when you see a person pick up a guitar with natural strings, not even the metal strings even, the cat gut strings, with a wood body, and they're playing that sound with no metal and no wires, and no amplification, that's uh, acoustic. When you see a guy pick up a guitar that's all plastic and stick a wire, uh, that's the first stage of the digital, though a lot of times the original amplifiers were still analog. Analog means it worked by two Tesla's babies. All right? Digital crossed out. All right, so they brought in this group called Devo, and they came in to remove the soul. We moved gradually out the hustle into what was called the bus stop. 
it was a form of destroying. Amorites took the hustle because what happened is the gay population liked the hustle because it had a lot of body flair to it. It was very much like Vogan. Everything was spinning and throwing their hands up. So this was a, a way for a guy to get his sugar out of his shoes without the public way. He could consider himself a good hustler. You know? And then from that, he could move on and become a good disco dancer. So the guys that you knew that were very good dancers in the discotheque were usually had a little sugar in their shoes. And they had it working, they had it working together. They knew what they were doing. All right? And then after they did that, they started slowly but surely introducing their music to our children. Now, how they do that? They removed all of the real instruments. Ninety-nine percent of the music that you hear on the radio or record or tape or CD today is synthetic. The, the violins are fake. The bass is fake. The drums are fake. It's all in drum machines. No more human element. Without the human element, there's really no emotion. And I don't care whether they tell you, you no, know, when I sample, I put my emotions in it. You put your emotions in the first three licks, and then when you push that continuation button and it goes on by itself, there's no more emotion regardless of what you say. You follow? This is all part of the plan for mind control. The harp project relates to the rainbow project. Because where there's sound, there's light. And when sound vibrates, different frequencies give off different colors of light. When you look up and see a rainbow, and you see the seven colors of the rainbow, if, you would, if they could tap a wire into the violet, you'd get a certain frequency that would give you a certain tone. They knew that. I'm saying that to say, they knew that they had to destroy the root of nine ether, not the hair. They had to get down beneath the hair. The hair grows out of the root, and that's connected to the protein in the body. That's the, the essence of you. They had to get down inside to destroy that before they could destroy the God in you and turn you into, from a man to a beast. Which they have, in most cases, if you look at the media today, succeeded in doing. People have transformed into beasts. You are afraid when you walk through a mall. And you are the newbies. And you're afraid of your own people yes, because that's how dangerous they appear to be here. Don't tell me that every place you go, that you come across a bunch of newbies, you're never afraid. Even if you're afraid of what you might have to do to one of them niggas, it's still fair. Because you don't feel like having to hurt nobody, and you definitely don't want to get hurt. But they have done something. There's definitely a transformation that has taken place. So what happened is they eased into the recording studios and made something that was exclusively controlled by record companies a public fad. Get your own recording studio, your own drum machine, your own everything, put in your basement, and do your own mixing and sound and make your own record. They eliminated all of the acoustic pianos. They even made what they referred to as an electric acoustic piano by Yamaha. And I said it as Yamaha and not Yamaha because the Arabs are also a part of it. And if you look at the Leviathan cover, you'll see I have Arabs on there too because they have been working with the devil way back, and I put it in the Vietnam book where you see each one of the Saudi Arabian kings sitting with a different president. This has not been one sympathizer. This goes all the way back to the Sultan himself, who you can find in the first page of the cover of Noble Juali's book, and made reference to several times in the Nation of Islam teaching. They also, I might add, make the mistake for that new information of giving Muhammad two identities in the nation of Islam teaching. One Muhammad in the message to the black man is referred to as a black Arab. They say he was of the black Arab nation, right in the message to the black man. Another set of teachings say, says that Muhammad was a Caucasian and that the wise men came together and told him how he could not convert his people and he died as a result of a broken heart. That is two different Muhammads. One is Muhammad the conqueror of Palestine, which is clear in the lessons when it says that the devil helped us take Palestine. The prophet Muhammad of 1400 years ago, the black Arab, had nothing to do with Palestine ever. He never had any dealings with Caucasians in his whole life. There's no place ever recorded of Rasulullah Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam, ever having anything to do with Caucasians. 
and mention them in the Quran under the term Rome, a surah named Rome. But that's it. They mention it in Surah Al Taha as on the, uh, I think it's 2102, on the day the trumpet is blown, we shall gather together the guilty blue eyed. Now, of course, the Arabs, in their latest translation out of Saudi Arabia, which I have, the latest Quran, has blue eyes. Before it was Blair, Blairy, Zurkan means blue. Zurkan, Azurak, everybody knows means blue. But that's the fact. Well, you know. The point is that to set that record straight, Honorable Elijah Muhammad was not making uh, a mistake in reference to Muhammad being white in one place and black in the next. No, contrary. It was two different Muhammads. Muhammad the Conqueror was the one that's talking about in the one that's 14 in the class. That's not Rasulullah they're talking about of taking devil's head. Prophet Muhammad never killed an Amorite in his life because he never came in contact with Amorites. However, Muhammad the Conqueror called the great Prophet Muhammad by the European. He did kill Amorites. And he was brokenhearted insofar as Salahuddin, defender of the faith, went into the courts of King Richard, revived him, lived with him when he was wounded. Remember, he almost struck down with a lance, brought him back to life and could not convert him. And wasn't able to convert the invading Christians who came to Jerusalem. The Muslims there could not convert those Christians because they did not realize they were dealing with the rose and the cross. A certain degree of Knights of Temple and Freemasonry who know more than Islam. And so he was broken hearted for that. You got that part of the chapter? All right. So now, getting back to the situation. Yeah. So here in the world in North America, we were now in these clubs getting banged upside the head with this new music that had only a bottom and a top called disco. We broke away from it and in came synthetic instruments and they rushed into the population access to all types of machines, drum machines, keyboards, Keyboards that play by themselves, pre-coded keyboards, just push the button and the music play, you know, everything to keep you on a synthetic wavelength. Why? To get back to the point, to try to damage the nine magnetic particles in the brain that link you to being a part of the ethereum. The ethereum is vibrating with you on those nine particles. When you have damaged particles, you have flash headaches that flicker from one side to the next. Not the same headaches you get when they're trying to tune in on one eye. But behind this area now, I'm talking about behind the ear, you get a pain behind here. It makes you feel like you're getting a stiff neck, right? That's because some of your magnetic particles are dead. The next question is always, can they be reactivated? No, they can't. You can learn to operate on them the same way a maimed individual can learn to survive, but you can never get them reactivated. Um, how did I destroy them? By putting headphones on and listening to music that was on a different wavelength in your body chemistry, repeatedly. He got the, the speakers bigger, the sound louder. The Amorite has an amplifier they call a Marshall. They didn't want Fender, they wanted a Marshall, and it had two extra digits on it for distortion. And they were sending out distorted sounds. And Amorite hooks up his guitar for heavy metal, he puts it on distortion. He wants a distorted sound. He sends that out into the air and it damages the brain. It does not damage amorites. What it does is it stimulates them. And they start jumping around like Mexican beans in a pot. <laughs> bouncing off each other, falling on the ground. They will literally, they have the brain particles soon now, a magnetic particle. To try to fuse them, they will actually take their head and stand back and shake their head in a complete circular motion wildly while the music is playing. I'm going to do it long ago, I won't be able to get up. Right? And they will do that and stand straight. You get up and try to do that. You will tangle your ether cords, because you have one of these, one of the particles, and fall flat on your lips. When you are spinning a person around, when you're spinning around a circle, they say, as long as you got four focal points, you don't have to worry about being dizzy. The moment you lose focal point as you're spinning clockwise, what kind of clockwise, that's how one becomes this, right? That's what dancing is about. Michael Jackson was a shaitan for them to teach black kids to stand there and do a triple and double spin. They'll tell you Nubians should not get into ballet. It's not for you. When you try to tell them that you want your child to take ballet in school, they'll tell you it's not for your kid. Their posture is different. Actually, we tend to get dizzy quicker than they do. And that's because they're already dizzy. 
They already suffer from brain deficiency because they're mutant. Anything that's a mutant or mutate from something else has a deficiency. He doesn't make his deficiencies public. You have to see him. But what he does make public is the desire to be him with your ability. He will lure you into his environment to feed off you because he is symbolically Dracula. Sounds weird, right? Boris Karloff and Bela Lugosi and those guys were symbols of Drago. A star constellation, Dracon, if you look in your Bible, in the Greek, where they have the dragon, the devil, he's called Dragon, Dracula. When does Dracula come out? The moon cycle. What does Dracula do? He takes the blood of the innocent and he turns them into vampires. But before he does that, he always creates a what? A ghoul. He creates the Negro that will help him destroy you. That will, who can work in the sun. That's why you know the ghoul is symbolic of a Negro. Because he's the vampire that does not have to go in a coffin at night. He can roam during the day. That's the charm that can work with them setting us up. His thing is to get into your bloodstream. Why does he want to get into your bloodstream? Hemoglobin. He needs the hemoglobin to produce the plasma, otherwise, as a hemophiliac, he will die. When the sun catches him, he turns to dust. Or as he says in the Bible, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. When the sun cycle comes in, and it's coming in now, he is turning to cancers on the rise. You're in his stories too. You're King Kong. You are King Kong in his stories. Want the story? Yeah. King Kong is a giant gorilla with supernatural strength. He was a god while he was in Africa. The reason why they call him King Kong is because Congo is Central Africa. And they're implying everybody in Africa, the Congo. The king is under the spell. In his homeland in Africa, he's worshipped by his own people. Every night, he would come to their town or their village, what he had, and he had a big fence built up against him, wouldn't he? And he would, they would have offerings of young virgins for him. And he would come to the town, they would put the virgins up there, and that would appease him, and he would go about his business. And they lived like that, it was all right, everybody was happy. Some Canaanites came along, stumbled into their village, and it came evening, and they had to start running and closing the gates, if you remember. Remember that? And they got scared. They said, what's going on? They said, well, close the gates. Well, Boomba, Kong was coming. They was going to love a Boomba, you know, stuff that they play. And in time, there was this large, boom, boom, steps. And they saw King Kong. The first thing that came to their mind is how to get King Kong back to America on stage so they can make some money out of it. So what they did is they lured him with a white woman. Because he was used to that, so the Africans said, if we give him her, he might not want to come back at all. See the blame, Washington? So King Kong kidnaps the white woman, runs off into the woods, thus starts the episode of the Amorites going throughout Africa to get the king, the giants, and bring them to America. Eventually, they sedate King Kong while he is trying to have a sexual relationship with this white woman. And they inject him, sedate him, tie him down, put him on a ship, and sail him through the passage over to America. When he gets to America, they present him before the public, chained down, and all these Amorites are in a party having a good time. That's you. Chained down mentally while the Amorites have a good time. He'll let you in and party, but you're going to be the clown there. So moving on. It was about the music they wanted to kick. All right, let's get back to where we was at. So what they did is they removed those instruments that vibrate with our chemistry. And now every Negro got some synthetic instrument in his basement. He's pushing little Casios and Panasonics and all fake. All removing the essence. Back to the point. The rainbow project, which is sending out these wavelengths, it is called mind control, started back there with who? 
Rainbow Project. Who's Rainbow? Phoenix Rainbow. Phoenix Rainbow. Now, nah, Phoenix Rainbow. Just who's a part of what? Phoenix. Rainbow. Bella. Remember? Time Machine Philadelphia Experiment? Well, the Philadelphia Experiment was initially intended for the sole purpose of creating invisibility for radar, which they already have called the stealth. You understand? When they got into it, the mathematician who got involved in it found out that also they can interfere with the brain because of what they refer to as zero time reference. That if all five or six of y'all went through a time loop here, when you came back, Abdul Bayek would be affected one way, you'd be affected another, she another, she another, and him another. They found that out. They realized that time has something to do with now. That time in the future has already happened, and time in the past is still happening. I think I told you all about that years ago. I said, if a person adrenaline is a high point when they die, it will stamp in now. And they will reiterate that incident. This is why people sometimes think they're driving along and they see a ghost run across the road. And they have calibrated that they come back to that same spot every year, or sometimes every 10 years, depending on how it aligns, that that same thing will happen over and over again. A lot of hauntings, as they call them, they make clear that this is a haunted house. What happens? A woman walks along that staircase every night at 12 o'clock on the dock. And so people come in, they set up monitors, and lo and behold, it's a disembodied soul, an exoplasm, an ethereal, an essence that is trapped in now. They can't get out of now. Now keeps happening over and over. The event was so traumatizing that they can't get out of it. It's happening all the time. It's called lost souls, trapped souls, trapped in limbo. They got terms for days about it. It happens already in your mind if you don't think it's possible. And I'll tell you when it has happened. There are incidents in your life where, regardless of what you're doing, you'll flash back to a certain corner where events took place. If you had friends or something, you hung out on one spot, it could have been 20, 30 years ago, you can flash back to that. Or you can flash back to an incident in a concert where you was having a good time. Or you can flash back to falling off a bike or whatever. But you have these things that have, are called now already taking place in your mind and you are away from it sometimes 10, 15, and 20 years. Everybody here has had one of those events stamped in their mind. And that event reoccurs periodically. But what keeps you from being trapped in the now of that event is that the body is dying forwardly. But when you were born, you started dying. You hear me? And you were dying because your cells were dying. You must expire. That's why they call it expiring. Expiration. You must expire before you can become totally ethereal again. But the events that take place while you are expiring, they stamp themselves in now. Like... Go back to, not the Savior Day, but the last Savior Day. And remember an event. And when you remember the event, you are reliving right now. So now is, now is the all. The all is not moving forward with you. And the all was not left in the past with you. Everything that takes place has a purpose or it won't. Light, for instance. Light was a necessity to exist within a certain period of time in the all. Light didn't begin with the all, because if light began with the all, then the all would be light. God, Allah, Om, Beos, Hashem, Adonai, Yahweh, Elohim, all of them are events in the all appropriated for specific time zones when they needed to be. That is why I said two years ago, before you believed in Allah, he didn't exist. Before you knew of Allah, he didn't exist. Because all that really exists to you 
is you right now. And when you're talking to a Negro, and they're talking about what's going to happen, you tell them that's not important. What's important, what's important, what's moving on, is right now. And how much time I waste talking to you and what I benefit or lose while talking to you. Because whenever you come in contact with any two people, I mean, or any two people come in contact with each other, one is gaining and one is losing. If you give something to somebody, I don't care what they are to you, they're still just another human being, you've lost. If they give something to you, you've gained. How do you utilize now? If you come out here and you talk to me, I give you something that you take with you forever. It's like saying, see that puddle over there? Don't fall in. So now when you leave me, and as you encounter people in each event of now in your life, you come to find out things I say become important at the moment. Meaning, someone starts a conversation, and you say, that's interesting. Pop was just talking about that. Bam, you're right on. Because I need that now. <laughs> really? They want to alter our now. Because we have a new zero time reference. We are altering time. For all intents and purposes, it all should be over. But it has just begun. All of my beloved brothers who preceded me, all of them, the messenger, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the prophet, Noble Juali, the seer, Marcus Garvey, all of them were leading up to now where we can start time from here. Yes, that's it. Yes. I was on 48 Can you elaborate more on the, uh, the, 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 I think you said E1 plus E2 equals the light of the sun. Can you elaborate yes. on Yes. Um, when you say E1, E2, and I know you like that subject because I watch your class. <laughs> You're pretty good. I watch you. You're pretty good teacher. Y'all guys are doing pretty good out there. Thank um, you. When you say E1 and E2 equals the sun, like, basically all you're saying is hydrogen and helium, right? H1 is really hydrogen. On the other side of it, there has to be an etheric light for the other sun, Utu, the etheric sun. You have the manifestation of a sun on this side, and then you have a manifestation of an etheric sun on the other side, an energy light. Let me show you what happens with that. In the um, Islamic world, touching on the base, you have what's called the star and crescent. You follow that? And they say that it's the symbol of the universe. It's the right symbol. It's this and it's this and it's this. It's the illusion. It's the lie. It's the confusion symbol. The reason why I say that, and I'm going back to your sun. That's where I'm going here. Is because when you see a crescent, you see that? And you put a star right here, or right here from your sight. You see that in, in, the, in the present? I ask you, is that possible? Think before you answer, please. Don't be no, don't be no, don't, don't want to do it. You know what I mean? Want to know. Is it possible for the star to sit in a crescent? Why not? That's right. Because the crescent is a moon. And the whole moon is really there. You're just seeing a portion block. And stars are further away from us than the moon. So no star could get on this side of the moon without blocking it out. It's a symbol of deception. The ball and identifies with the triple darkness on the other side of the ether. That there is a recognition of other suns. Now, on this side of the ether, you have H1 hydrogen. Right? Again, 554 million tons of hydrogen is changed into 550 million tons of helium each second on the sun. That means hydrogen combined to make helium, 2 He. And as helium burns, it gives off more hydrogen. Someone had to make that sun. Someone had to create that formula because it could never reach the helium without some outside force bringing them together to start this 
tumbling process. So just like that sun on this side gives light more on the physical plane, on the other side, either one and either two produces the light of the sun on the spiritual side. And the process is either one changes into either two, which gives off bad information that is then rejuvenated into good information and gives off pure light. Let me tell you what I mean by that. When the man comes along that can take bad information and make it good information, he is the son of righteousness. When the man comes along that can take the teachings of the nation of Islam, which has been corrupted information, and take that corrupted information and make it good information and healthy information for the people, that's the son of righteousness. When that man comes along that can take that Quran that has been tampered with and write the wrong in it, that's the son of righteousness. The same applies to the Torah. When a man comes along, he can take the teachings of the messenger or the prophet, Job Dwali, and change those bad teachings into good teachings for you, that's the son of righteousness. But the man can take dead soil and the sun can come out and grow fresh vegetables in it. When I can come here and take this earth, you people, and rejuvenate life in you and grow in you, I'm inside you like a plant and I'm blossoming in your brain. I'm turning you into pure light without you even realizing it. When that person comes, that person is called the son of righteousness. But the sad part about it is he can only come at the end, right before the great and dreadful day. His presence represents the great and dreadful day. When the messenger of Allah Elijah Muhammad finished his mission, he had succeeded in turning the hearts of the fathers toward their sons. But the devil stepped in and disrupted. That's why I was necessary. I was off in my cradle in Ansar. I was not involved in what they were doing. But when they corrupted what he was doing for them, then it was necessary for them to take and bring the Yahweh or the Lord into existence. But I may, as a son of righteousness, turn all of this bad to good. You were falling off the cliff and you had to be caught. Meaning, you were fed up. You were being confused. You were being lied to. You were following along and you were seeing corruption in the mosques. You were seeing corruption in the synagogues. You were seeing corruption in the church. They did not send a preacher. They did not send a religious man. I've been telling people for years, stop trying to judge me as a religious man so you can find faults in my character. I'm not a religious man, I am a teacher. Religious people don't work well with you. You need a teacher. Someone that will allow you to badger them just to give you the truth. Someone that will allow you to exercise all your egos at them just to give you the truth. You understand? So I incarnate here. So I can stand before you and in all that you have been given, in all that you have been taught, in all that you read, in all that you think you know, when you come before me, you have to humble yourself. Because of how far the ladder you think you are, you know I can humble you. And it's better to have one man humble you and you rule all other men than to argue with me and be ruled by all other men. You follow me? It's better to stand before me as a father and let me chastise you and get you right and you look good in the eyes of everybody else than standing out there looking like a fool. Because when you see a brother on the street now in a bow tie, you follow? You be saying, I just don't know. He just don't know. When you see a father of Yahweh being Yahweh, you say, he just don't know. They have no idea. And the biggest conversation y'all have in your travel to the day is people have no idea what's going on. Dang, look at these people, they don't even know this world is coming down. They don't even know if the person's are here. And they don't know if independence, the movie Independence is, is, is them telling them something. You know it though. And that is the blessing. Many are called. And I stood up in 1970 and I yelled and I called and I said, Many are called, but few are chosen. When they stick and shifted it, all of them left. Some of them are back in the street niggas. Some of them think. Oh, he's so slick. 
He's this. He's that. No. I'm the man that's consistent in facts. You see me as because you have judged me by religious eyes and said he's not a holy man. Heard he does this. He sings music. I can do that. I can do all of that. I'm not your preacher. I ain't your imam. I told him in Brooklyn, don't call me imam. I'm not no imam. Okay, imam. I'm not a religious person. I am simply a teacher. A man coming to right the wrong. And my very presence and what I stand for and what I teach you is doing the job. A job nobody can. None of y'all can. And all those fools that left here. And all those that were fools that left here. All they can talk about is the teacher. Not the teachings. They can talk about me and how much they don't like me and how I didn't do this and how I didn't do that. But one thing I always did was my job. Regardless of whether I neglected you, a book is still coming out for the whole of our people. You follow me, fans? I have many people saying, you know, brother so-and-so misses you. I said, I don't remember who it is. He ceased to exist in my world because I have a job to do that's bigger than you. They don't understand a person with a mission. They don't understand your insanity about your mission. They want you to be a person. And I always tell them, if I was a person, I wouldn't be the person I am. <laughs> and you probably wouldn't want to talk to me. It's the person I am that makes you want to talk to me. And in being that person, I don't have time for you unless you are in my world. Unless you want to make this happen. Unless you want to help make this happen. Other than that, I don't have enough time for you. And I'll give you enough time for you to see that I'm not there. I'm not playing. Oh, he's just this. You don't know me. I have died for you people thousands of times. My life has been on the line for you people thousands of times. You understand? I am the only one that will get up. Nobody else got up and talked about the rod. And all you saw it. And put my view and say, man, the nation was all, I'm surprised they didn't kill him. You don't think I knew that? But guess what? My responsibility. Man, you translate your own Quran, man. I have to kill you. Guess what? I got a job to do. So then that's what's important to me. And the moment your life is less important to you than the job, you're going to see that everything in the universe works for you. As long as you got yourself out front, you're going to party and have a good time and laugh and joke all the time, remember, you're going to be a failure. When you start doing for others more than you do for yourself, and you're going to succeed. You stop putting yourself in front of everything. Put other people out, give to other people. You follow what I'm saying? And you're going to find that that power of love, that's the thing that controls me. People don't think, because they don't know me. I don't express my love by, by, by sitting on my lap and back. I, I express my love by making sure that you have a place to sit. Right. Kevala, the deal is I'm going to tell you the truth regardless of how bitter it is to others. I don't care how mad the Muslims get. Defend it. Defend it with truth, not with a weapon. Defend it with truth. If everything I'm saying about Farad is not true, then you produce the facts. You follow what I'm saying? If what I'm saying about Islam is not true, then produce a book and prove it. I put a book out 10 years ago, 360 questions asked the Muslim, they ain't answered it yet. All they're still trying to push is the Bilal fill-up book. What does it deal with? Me, the teacher. That's because they think I am like their minister, the religious guy. I'm not. I'm a person. Play Monopoly with me and I'll cheat if I can win. Just for the fun of it. And that's my way of telling you, don't make me the preacher. We played baseball, I cheated. Say so he's cheating. Pops is cheating. And he was having fun. The fool was the one saying, Pops is cheating. That fool will later go off and slander. I watch the people on the internet ignore him. They can't ignore me. They're too interested in what I have to say on the internet. The room captain, whoever says, ignore him, the people are still asking me questions. Well, you, they, they can't. I know that. You understand what I'm saying? I know they can't ignore me. They can't help. They're waiting for Sunday, they're waiting for me. Our room is so full 
that people are mad at us. Who is this Malachi person? The only thing is wrong is you people not coming and saying, that's God, and get them real mad to keep the conversation going. You instead of you so busy not saying, that's God right there. You know God is right there talking to you. Anything you want to know, he ain't God. Yes, he is God. He ain't God. How can a 5% say I'm not God and believe some wino in Holland became God? <laughs> Bonafide wino, ex follower of Morris Science Temple, which is obvious by the symbol on the, of the 5%. The symbol of the 5% is the number of a circle, a 7, and a star and a crescent with NATO symbol behind it. That, that 8 pointed star is NATO symbol. And the circle and the 7 is Noble Juali. Don't tell me Clarence was in the nation of Islam and never heard about Noble Juali. I call you a liar. 5% symbol is a more science symbol. 5% brag that they were sitting in chock full of nuts when he said, I met the father and we was drinking a cup of coffee. God Allah in person is drinking a cup of caffeine. But I can't be God. But a wino could be God. A half white man, half white and half black could be God, who ate pork, by the way. But for all they tell you, ate pork and then told him, don't eat this. He could be God or Allah, and I can't be God. Yeah, yeah. You got some yuppie on the cross with a 1960 hippie hairstyle called Jesus. He could be God, and I can't be God. Who y'all fooling, man? And only one of all those gods that show and prove their God by their works is me. And nobody does all the scriptures. I ain't met a teacher yet. Ask your teacher, why hasn't he translated the Quran for you himself, his way to support what he teaches? Even if they say he translated the Quran to support his teachings, say, then why didn't your teacher support his teaching with his Quran? And why are you talking to the white women? Now let me ask the Hebrew. Why didn't Yahweh, Ben Yahweh, translate the Torah instead of putting up some old phony book that looked like his own translation with some drawn sketches and call it their Bible from the King James Version? And then turn to the Hebrew Israelites and say, why haven't... Ben Ami and Kata and then turns to Israelite church and asks, why haven't heard of me? And keep on turning around and say, how come none of your Christian preachers ever took the time to translate the scripture so we can see what it says? Why that man? <laughs> Where do you get the time to do all of this? <laughs> Meanwhile, writing a hundred books a year, covering every subject that they ask. I write books based on what people ask you. As I listen, though, you want to know about that? I'll tell you more than you want to know. <laughs> I had one person say to me, how come I didn't go to a debate with Siraj Wahaj? Do you know what, what happened to Siraj if you mention a debate with your mom, Ethan? You make that man nervous and sick. He'll start getting sick. <laughs> Ahmed D. then died, and that was their last hope for, for lying and messing stuff up. They cannot deal with us. <laughs> I heard a joke. I know I might have heard it. I thought it was funny. I heard it. It says, not to put it in our language, right? It says that there's a Nawapian, who's us, and a Christian, who's them, camping together in the woods. And a bear comes. Correct? And as they get to running from the bear, the bear takes chase. And they're running. And they're running. And the Nawapian looks over to the Christian and says, what's he going to do now? He says, I'm going to pray. You know what I'm saying? He said, well, what you going to do? You know, because that bear is catching up with us. You follow? And Wapin says, I don't have but one thing to worry about. The Christian says, what? Your religion? He said, no. Beating you in running. <laughs> <laughs> you understand what I mean? That's the real deal. Right, you keep praying, and I'll keep running. <laughs> Your race is against the bear. My race is against you. <laughs> you you try to outrun him, I'm just going to outrun you, and we'll see. <laughs> Shalom. أني فرق شيل الكلون 
وأكلوه إذ أرغم شيني أن يضحك مع الكلوم وأكلوه إذ وحد مع مين أن يأكلوه أن جهه كما أرغم في الكلوم وخذ كما تفردوا أن يأكلوا أكون الكودي إني أكتب داخل الكلوم كما خفاض إذونية أحمد داخل الكلوم أني أبدا وأخذ الكلوم إذو أني إذو الكلوم يأكلو أني أكلو الكلوم يبنيلو أني أبنيلو Begin all prayers and thinking by using al kalum I am in the love of the all, and all love is in me. I am a part of the all, and the all is part of me. I am one with the all, and the all is one with me. I can succeed as a part of the all, and fail as an individual. I can be all that I wish in the all, as long as my wish is to stay in the all. I am never alone. The all is, I am. The all can, I can. The all does, I do.